today we are going to do a fun little informational video on adjusting a Voitech adjustable gas block on the MNP10. So part two in the MNP10 video series, if you want to call it that on our channel. I am going to try to keep it brief uh, on account of how it is literally minus four degrees out here in a beautiful sunny Waterman, Illinois. Our range of choice. Uh, if you don't want to take my word for it. Minus four, so beautiful day to be out here uh, doing a review for you guys, but that's just how dedicated we are. So currently I have the set screw in the gas block turned all the way in. Um, it's not even flush with the end of the gas block. So I assume it's gonna be operating like a single shot right now. And I am slowly gonna back it out. I think I'm gonna start with a Tula 150 grain uh, anybody who hasn't adjusted a gas block before, I actually haven't. Um, doesn't seem like there's too much to it. The key, as far as I can tell, is to load one round into the magazine, fire a shot, and if the rifle gets to the point that it's reliably uh, locking back on the empty magazine, that means that it's getting enough gas uh, to do what it should. So uh, let's get to it. Did hit the primer. That's weird. Down range. Okay, as expected. Did not lock back. Okay, turned out the adjustment screw one full turn. Let's try another round. Really don't know how many takes this is going to take. Thought I would uh, share the journey with you guys so I don't feel so lonely out here in the sub zero tundra. Alright, next shot. Ooh, again. Not seem to be liking Tula. Hit the primer again. I probably should have left it in there for a while. Don't do this at home. All right, did not lock open again. I'm gonna switch to ZQI brass uh, NATO spec since I was having some light primer strikes with the Tula. We'll see how it runs with this, and then we'll switch to the Tula later on to make sure it's locking back as well once we get it to that point. So this is pretty much flush with the end of the gas block. The adjustment screw of the two full turns out from uh, all the way in, I would say. Down range. Did not lock open. ZQI. Down range. And another light primer strike, not with Tula this time. Yeah, primer got hit again, so. Definitely some light primer strikes going on. About. Okay. Did not lock open. Uh, that makes four turns from all the way in. If my memory serves me right, it's still not locking open. So let's see if it will this time. Another, another light primer strike. 
Well, that sucks. You really never want to hear click when you're hoping for a bang or vice versa. Did not lock open, but did eject the brass. So let's turn out the adjustment screw some more. Approximately 10 hours later. It's another full turn. Out. I think that makes a dozen. I'm gonna have to count these when I get back. That screw is really out there now, that adjustment screw. Still not locking back. Yeah, there's gotta be something wrong. There's gotta be something going on for it not to be locking back. With that screw all the way out there. Okay, so I don't know what's wrong with it. It is not locking back, even with the screw out, as far as it will go. I want to test if it cycles three rounds reliably. Rapid fire. No. So, let's see what happens. Okay, it ejected but it did not pick up another round, so it's not getting enough gas to do that either. Click, same thing. Interesting. So, between the light primary strikes I was getting and, uh, and how it's not cycling properly. Looks like I have a problem to figure out. Several months later. A few months have passed since I recorded that footage, but I did want to end this video on a happy note. So after the failures I showed before, uh, I was certain that I had messed up something with the install. I went to the internet, as we all do, and some pretty good news. The light primer strikes, I'm happy to say, were solved completely by removing the firing pin spring that the rifle comes with from Smith & Wesson. I'm not going to show you guys how to remove it. I assume if you are watching this video, you are familiar enough with the AR uh, to know where the firing pin is when you disassemble the bolt carrier group. But in any case, uh, as we all know, the AR usually has a floating firing pin. And Smith & Wesson, for whatever reason, decided to give it one of these. Liability reasons, I don't know. Once I remove that, no more light primer strikes. Now the second issue, I am also happy to say, the uh, pretty much the failure to properly cycle was down to a mixture of things. First and foremost, the fact that it was negative four degrees out there. Uh, the rifle was fairly new and I understand from reading the Smith & Wesson uh, forums that there is something to the whole break-in period, even in not sub uh, you know, freezing conditions. So I took the rifle to an indoor range shortly thereafter. I looped it up with plenty of ballastol um, and it functioned perfectly. So to prove it uh, today, I am going to run the same ammo as in the test. So I'm going to run ZQI and Tula through it. Uh, the ZQI is standard NATO 147 grain again. So if we're going to do three rounds just to show that it's functioning. That was actually the, that was the Tula. This is a ZQI and a DPMS mag. Do three rounds. Locked open. That was ZQI. This is Tula, 165 grain. Three rounds. Locked open. So 
all's well that ends well, I can happily report that the Voitech adjustable gas block on the M&P 10 is working as it should. Between putting more rounds through the rifle, moving it up, and shooting it in conditions that aren't so extremely cold, um, I was able to get the rifle to lock back on empty. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but that adjustment screw is... It's not far out of the gas block. Uh, I think it was a half turn from fully flush at the end of the gas block, just for reference, for it to start uh, locking open reliably. I turned it out another full turn, I believe, just for the sake of reliability. Uh, with the Precision M472 uh, brake on there, this thing really doesn't shoot very hard. Um, it's hard to distinguish from a 5.56 back-to-back, uh, -back, so I don't mind it being a little overgassed. Um, the one thing I would caution you guys uh, that I've learned, and the reason I don't want to remove this uh, rail to show you the, how the adjustment screw is looking on the gas block, is I, I am happy with the Odin Works rail, but this barrel nut adapter is aluminum. Um, I think the cold might have something to do with this. Also, when I got back from that filming day, I wanted to put the rail back on, and I stripped this one uh, screw here. So just as a word of caution, these are easy to strip. Currently I have five uh, bolts holding on the rail instead of six. It feels it feels very secure anyway. And uh, in defense of Odin, when I let them know about this, they sent me a replacement barrel nut uh, and adapter on their dime, no questions asked. So I will get around to replacing that eventually, but the rifle seems solid as it is right now. Uh, so that's it. Hope this was educational to some of you. I know it was to me. Um, just a reminder not to panic when you have a new gun and it's not running 100% because I guess things do wear in, not just custom 1911s, but M&P10s too. Um, we do have more content coming. I know it's been a while since we put anything up, but hope to change that today. Gonna shoot some groups with this thing uh, and a few more guns, so stay tuned guys. Thanks.